today, as India celebrates Republic Day and the birth of the extraordinary constitution that established your nation as the biggest sovereign democracy in the world, I want to offer my sincere greetings to a country that is very close to my heart. I was hugely looking forward to joining you for this important occasion and the kind invitation of my friend Prime Minister Modi. Alas, our common struggle against COVID has kept me in London. All over the world, this virus is compelling people to stay apart, including family and friends in Britain and India, who form what Prime Minister Modi has called the living bridge between us. As I speak, our two countries are working side by side to develop, produce and distribute vaccines that will help to free humanity from the pandemic. And thanks to the combined efforts of Britain, India and many other nations, we are on the road to success against COVID. So I look forward to visiting India later this year, strengthening our friendship and striving for the quantum leap in our relationship that Prime Minister Modi and I have both pledged to achieve. But for now, let me wish everyone in India, as well as those celebrating here in Britain, a very happy Republic Day. I'm delighted to send my very best wishes to the Indian people on Republic Day. I had the enormous privilege and pleasure of visiting India last month, where I had excellent meetings in Delhi with Prime Minister Modi, Foreign Minister Jai Shankar and other ministers. And I visited Bengaluru to see for myself the brilliant, innovative business and tech partnerships that we're forging together. Prime Minister Boris Johnson will be visiting India soon. And I think this demonstrates the huge value that we attach to the strong relationship between our two great countries. A relationship that we want to deepen in a number of key areas. For example, we're working towards agreeing an enhanced trade partnership this year. That will serve as a stepping stone towards a future FTA, unlocking huge opportunities for British and Indian businesses. We also want to develop our partnership on mobility and migration in a way that supports our economic links, as well as the many ties of family and friendship between our two countries. We're working together to enhance our relationship on defence and security, including in the maritime areas, but also cooperation on cyber. We're working shoulder to shoulder to tackle the threat of climate change ahead of the historic UN Climate Change Conference, which the UK will co-host with Italy in Glasgow in November. And of course, we're also joining forces to defeat the coronavirus pandemic to ensure that vaccines are developed as quickly and as widely as possible right around the world. India is already demonstrating real leadership in this area which I saw firsthand when I visited a vaccine distribution centre in Delhi. And the UK is committed to deepening our cooperation on the full range of other foreign policy and development challenges that lie ahead. For all of those reasons and more, we're proud to invite India to join the G7 summit in Cornwall later this year. We look forward to welcoming Prime Minister Modi to the UK for that important meeting, and I hope to see Foreign Minister Jai Shankar in the UK soon too. So as we continue to celebrate and strengthen our modern, vibrant, thriving partnership, I'm delighted to wish the people of India a very happy Republic Day. Let's keep working together to strengthen the friendship between our countries and build a brighter future for all our people. Thank you. Namaskar. I thank their excellencies, the Right Honourable Mr. Boris Johnson, Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Right Honourable Mr. Dominique Raab, Foreign Secretary, and Lord Tariq Ahmed, Honourable Minister of State for the Commonwealth, United Nations and South Asia for their gracious messages on the occasion of India's 72nd Republic Day. This is a day when the people of India celebrate her unity and unique diversity and we are joined by citizens, Indians, diaspora and friends of India here in the United Kingdom and all across the world. 
It is an occasion when we rededicate ourselves to making our contributions, big or small, to the building of our great nation and to the realization of India's true destiny. Though 2020 had brought unprecedented challenges in the form of the pandemic and its impact on the global economy, for India and the UK, it was a period of transformation in our ties as we found ourselves working together on solutions from a vaccine against COVID and our leadership in addressing climate change to our excellent trade and economic agenda. Our efforts are geared to make 2021 a year of hope and optimism and our distinguished partners in the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office and across the government of the United Kingdom share our confidence that there is much that we can look forward to in the cooperation between our two nations in the coming year. Our leaders have a shared vision and we will work together to realize it. Today, our long-standing and unique ties are poised to enter a new era and many new initiatives are in the works for our mutual benefit and for the good of the world. India looks forward to warmly welcoming Right Honorable Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Mr. Boris Johnson, as soon as it is convenient for the Right Honorable Prime Minister to travel to our country. So I take this opportunity today to convey my warmest wishes to Indian citizens and diaspora in the UK and all our friends in England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. And I look forward to welcoming you back at last soon at India House and meeting you in person as soon as it is safe to do so. In the meanwhile, I wish you all the best of health and continued success. Jai Hind!